What is your most disturbing, scary, or creepy real story? Serious Part 7. For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel thread tonic. Account 1. When I was about 13 years old, our dog ran away from home. This happened a few times, as the gate in the back was left open due to family members being careless and not ensuring it closed all the way, and she got out. Usually not a big deal. The neighborhood we were in was a pretty okay neighborhood, and I could usually find her not that far away sniffing at things. Usually in the alleys behind houses, as that's where people set out their trash, etc. She was just curious. And the minute she'd see me, she'd drop whatever she was after and come straight to me. We'd head home. No biggie. This one time it happened, though. I went looking for her and couldn't find her. I started to get a bad feeling and kept looking, probably a good six blocks away. Further than she'd ever roamed before was an area with a bunch of townhomes, rental properties. She'd never gone that far before, and I was nearly in tears, ready to give up and go home to wait for her to hopefully find her way back this time instead, as I'd been out probably for almost an hour trying to find her at this point, walking around. When I saw some slight movement behind a wooden fence and thought I heard a yip, in this random person's backyard was my dog. She was muddy and wet, and they'd chained her to a post in the yard. She was pulling at the chain, barking and trying to get to me. It was pretty far away, so I assumed that the people had decided to take her in, having seen her running around or something. I knew it was her, because she was my dog, damn it, and I knew it was her. And also she had her collar on, I'll never forget what happened next. I rang the doorbell, an older dude, Asian, opened the door after I rang the bell a second time. Having given it a good twenty seconds, and hearing people inside yelling, Talking yes, he said, looking at me through a crack in his door. Hi, my name is absolutely no shame, and I'm here about my dog. I'm so happy you found her and thank you for getting her off the streets. He looked at me suspiciously. What dog, he said, staring at me. What? My dog? The little white dog you have in your backyard, I replied. I was starting to get really creeped out at this point. We have no dog here, he said, and tried to close the door on me. That fucker. I stopped the door with my foot. The dog in your backyard, right there. I was getting louder at this point as I was starting to panic a little. I pointed towards his backyard and my dog started to bark frantically. He looked in the direction I was pointing, looked back at me, sort of made a disappointed or annoyed grimace and said, oh, that dog, rather unconvincingly. Then he left the doorway. I was totally mystified and more than a little frightened at this point, so I went back around to the yard and was ready to climb over the fence and just take my dog back myself. When he came to the patio door of his yard, stepped into the yard with her, she cowered far, far away from him, I noticed, and unchained her from the post, then stepped over and opened his gate. She booked it to me and pretty much leaped into my arms as I kneeled down to meet her, and the old dude just wordlessly walked back inside with a scowl on his face. I have no idea what would have happened if I hadn't wandered out that far to find her, but he didn't seem to have any intention of returning her or calling the pound or anything. Her collar had her license tag, information on it as well as her owner's information on another tag, so his family could have dealt with it but it didn't seem like they had any intention of doing so. I got the worst feeling from that guy. After that, if she ever got out of the yard again, she was never more than about 50 feet from the house, fence boundaries. We even found her waiting patiently outside the gate to the backyard. Once, TLDR, this guy had either rescued or stolen my dog, tried to deny it, was super shady, and I, I'll never know why. Account 2. When I was about 13 or 14, I lived on a farm in N.C. This wasn't a regular farm that you would expect with fields full of beans and shit. It was actually a pine tree harvestery. Pine needles are a big landscaping commodity, and so we lived basically in the woods and would bale the pine straw every year, whatever. The point is... 
that my house was in the middle of 550 acres of perfectly lined longleaf pines. My living room had a huge picture window. I won't go into the architecture of the house, but it was a weird custom job built by some dentist in the 30 Ace S. The window in the living room stretched nearly the entire length of the room, maybe 50 feet. The house was built on a subtle hill, so the living room itself sat five or six feet off the ground, so you had something of an angle to look out at a solid mile of pine trees. During the winter, it was unsettling because you'd get just a bit of snow, enough to reflect moonlight, so that you could see the dogs running around at night. I'll be honest, I hated that room and that window. So now to the relevant part, I had a cousin over for the weekend, and we were doing what kids do in the country, throwing stuff in the fireplace to see what happens. It is getting late, and the fire is dying down, so we build the big kingdom of couch cushions and blankets in the living room and get ready for bed. Nothing out of the ordinary until we hear the dogs barking. They were really far away. The property stretches for nearly a mile, so I just assumed they were chasing off whatever animal felt like shitting in my yard. So my cousin is staring out the window and not saying anything, which prompts the standard. What's up? He just kind of keeps staring and says he feels like he's seeing things. Naturally, I get all anxious and start staring out the window as well. Nothing happens for a few minutes, and he gets more and more annoyed with me because I'm asking what he saw. He keeps shushing me so that he can focus. And then we both see it. A shadow of a person moves from one tree to the next. Not a run, not a leap, just a brisk walk from one tree to another. This is probably 100 yards out from the house. We can't actually tell if the person is coming closer or not because we're dealing with moonlight reflecting off of snow slush ice. I guess the crazy part is that we didn't so much freak out. Because at this point, there is still that chance that we didn't see what we saw, you know. So we just kept staring. We should have gone to wake up my dad, but he's an idiot and the kind of guy to walk out on the patio and holler into the woods with his rifle. We were just scared enough to agree that we don't want to taunt whatever is happening. So about three minutes later, it happens again. But a good 50 feet from where we first saw it, another person, another tree, a few strides, and they were gone. This happened every few minutes for the next half hour, and we just stared. At this point, I should mention that I didn't really have neighbors. The land surrounding our farm was federal paper. I don't know who owns it now, so it was miles and miles of uncultivated trees. You don't see people around the farm unless they intend to be there. So we keep watching as these two figures intermittently appear and vanish until finally we see one appear, but not disappear. Instead, we focus in on it and see that it is now running forward. We lose our shit and go wake my dad. By the time we get into the room with my half-awake father, there is no one to be seen. We sprint around locking doors and windows. Keep in mind that we're out in the country with no one around. It rarely occurs to lock doors. Every door was worse than the last, because you just know that as soon as you reach the door, someone is going to be trying to open it, although that never happened. We locked everything up, walked around the house at least 50 times making sure no one got in without us knowing and then convinced my dad to fall asleep in the living room with us while we stared out the window. I never understood why my dad wouldn't call the police. He always had this, we take care of our own mentality, and it simply wasn't an option to call 911. The next day we went out to look, and absolutely, there were footprints everywhere in the snow. We saw them between trees, and then we finally saw where someone had been standing right in front of the window, but as I said, I wouldn't have seen them, because while I'm seven feet up in the living room, they would have been right beneath me. Account 3. I've told this story before, but this is an appropriate thread for it. One night, when I was 13 years old, I had gotten my period for the first time, and ended up sleeping on my back. I am an avid side sleeper, so this is a really weird position for me. I was dreaming, and in that dream I was sitting in a chair, I leaned it back on its back legs and suddenly the chair started to slowly lean further and further back until I drifted into the eternity below me. This freaked me out, and I jolted awake. When I awoke, there was a figure leaning, hovering directly above my face, and all I saw was a hooded white, 
Flat, ovular, and relatively featureless face with big, ovular, glassy eyes and an expression like it was determined to devour my eternal soul, the face was humanoid, very two-dimensional, with thin, quivering, angry lips and two holes where its nose would be, with eyebrows arched high up onto its forehead. I could feel an unworldly hate burning right through me as it loomed over me. It was absolutely the most helpless I have ever felt and would ever feel. Because it was more than just my life I felt was at stake. I tried to move, scream, breathe, anything and couldn't. It was paralyzing me with its hate. I finally was able to let out the tiniest whimper. And as soon as the sound escaped me, it stood straight up and paced back and forth at the foot of my bed, still staring. It was like a force field was erected around me, and the frustration of it trying to get at me again was radiating throughout the room. It looked like a starving tiger behind glass, longing to lunge at its vulnerable prey. If only it weren't for the barrier between us. It was tall, almost all the way to the ceiling. Tall and very thin, wearing a long black cloak that covered everything except that terrifying face. I realized that it hadn't been floating over me. It had stood at the foot of my bed and leaned over it to hover its face over mine. I sat up in my bed, still frozen, just staring at it. My closet door behind it was cracked a few inches, and it swooped in there and peered out at me, never having broken eye contact. It continued to stare, quivering with hate and frustration until it slowly faded away. I turned my light on and it stayed on at night for a long time. I never slept with that closet door open again, and I didn't sleep again that night. I stayed the night in the living room with all of the lights on, just sitting on the couch. I later dismissed it as sleep paralysis for several years. It was a very believable and plausible explanation. Then I became friends with a girl who confided in me and told me a story. She was up late at night by herself with her door open. Something out in the living room by the kitchen caught her eye, and when she looked at it, she saw a figure standing there, beckoning her to approach it. She looked away, refocused on it, and it was still there. When she described it, she described the exact same creature that had attacked me. We each got a sketchbook and drew what we saw, and when she showed me hers, I was staring at my attacker all over again. She had never heard my story before telling hers, TLDR was attacked by a scary figure one night, dismissed it as sleep paralysis until a friend described the exact same creature to me that had plagued her. She didn't know about my experience until after she had told me about hers. Account 4 I was at the Manassas battlefield this past April with my BF at the time. We got so lost in the woods because we wandered off trail and out of nowhere I heard a horse. I'd seen a group of kids on the horse tour thing earlier, so I thought they could help us get going in the right direction. But suddenly it sounded as if the horses were running full speed just out of sight. I jumped to the side to let them pass and it went silent. I was bawling the entire two-hour walk back to the parking lot. Account 5 it was around last year. We had a friend that went missing for almost a week. We weren't really that close, and he lives in a campus dorm, so I really didn't know. Till that night. My housemates saw a report from the university's FB page that there were a couple of bodies found in a spring at the far edge of the campus. Our university is located beside a mountain. We all started to worry, especially when I learned that he really had been missing. We were anxious for news to come. And when the reports of the initial ID came in, we were shocked. He was one of them. The report misspelled his last name, but we knew it was him. Panic mode. My housemates and I went out to meet with his doormates. While I called a couple of our friends that went straight to the springs, they weren't able to see him there. Since when they got there, the police already took the bodies for autopsy. At that point, we couldn't do anything but wait for further news. It turns out that the two of them went swimming there the weekend before and drowned. Their bodies got really bloated from being soaked for days and crustaceans started to eat away their skins. It really seemed at first that it was a frat initiation gone bad because they both looked like they were covered in lashes. It's a very fucked up way to die, R.I.P. Kevin. Account 6. I was running my cable route in the inner city between jobs I realized I had to shit. Now. Unfortunately, the nearest quick trip is like five miles away. 
three hound 67 light years in city travel, so I gamble and hit the nearest gas station. I get there, and of course there's a line to the one unisex bathroom. A dude, a chick, and myself are hanging around making small talk, but mentally I am an absolute shit-squeezing wreck. After about five minutes, the dude goes into full-on rage, panic, and starts trying to rip the door open, making the most demonic screeches. The woman in the bathroom is freaking out, the chick next to me is freaking out, and just as I step in to give him a WTFBRO, it was like he got hit with a jolt of electricity and fell. Luckily, I caught him, but at this point I realize he's having a seizure. I cannot describe the feeling I felt looking into this gentleman's eyes, crying blood, foaming at the mouth, and flailing about that I was just having a conversation with. The elderly woman in the restroom happens to be a retired nurse, go figure, and promptly instructs bystanders and I how to handle the situation, and the paramedics arrive towards the end of his fit, turns out his alcoholism was linked with his epilepsy or some shit, and he was waiting in line to sneak a swig of the flask in his coat pocket, info from his wife. Never would have expected it, dude seemed cool as fuck, well-dressed and groomed all that jazz. The ordeal ends, and I tell the woman it's her turn to use the restroom, to which she declines from being freaked the fuck out. I, however, dropped the most contemplated and beautiful deuce in the dirtiest bathroom of the metro area. Maybe it's not that scary, but seizures scare the brother-loving piss out of me. And I think some people's personal lives are too much for me. This is one of two insane instances where I happen to be in the right, wrong, place at the right time due to minor, unusual route delays. Count seven. My grandma was around seven and lived in Germany during WW2. Her town was getting bombed regularly. One day, her little brother kept crying and begged to stay in their neighbor's house for the night. Her parents were okay with it, and they went to stay with the neighbors. That night, a bombing run came through, and their house was completely destroyed. It's crazy how close I was to not existing. Account 8. When I lived with my parents, I had come home after having spent the Saturday at a friend's. To my surprise, the house was quiet. My parents were supposed to be there, but no one responded when I said, Hello. I walk around and check the living room, the bedrooms, then decide to check the kitchen for a note or something, but instead, I find blood everywhere. It was clear that something very bad had happened, and I got this ill feeling. There was blood all over the sink, the countertop, the floors, just everywhere. So I go to grab the phone, but it too is covered in blood. As I stood there frozen in fear, staring at the blood-spattered wall by the phone, it dawns on me that whoever did this could still be in the house. My eyes then follow the blood down the wall to the floor, where I see it trailed toward the doors to the garage and the basement. I immediately dart out the front door screaming for help and see a cop car pull into the driveway following my mom's car. My mom jumps out of the car covered in blood and yells, We have to find Dad's finger. I soon somewhat find relief in discovering my parents are alive and well, and that my father had just lost his finger while using the chipper, shredder, in the backyard. Along with the police, my mom and I looked through the wood chip pile for Dad's finger, but to no avail. So to this day, he has one less digit. The day after the accident, I was told to put the chipper, shredder away and move the pile, so I do, and end up finding Dad's finger. It was white and fleshy, almost fake-looking but it was real. I didn't want to touch it, so I picked it up with two sticks and brought it into my father who cried at its belated discovery. We buried it in the backyard later that day next to our old dog. Account 9. I woke up to see my 75-year-old housekeeper sitting on a chair in my room facing me, staring, wearing an old WWW2 gas mask. I'm pretty sure it was sleep paralysis, though. Account 10. When I was about 10, 11. I was ill and did not go to school one day. My parents both worked and couldn't get the day off, so told me just to stay in the house and don't answer the door to anyone, and the usual stranger talks, etc. I was sitting watching TV in the front room that has a big bay window that looks out onto the street, which is a main road with a row of shops across the road. I felt awkward with all the people walking past, so decided to shut the curtains slightly and for some reason, as I did, I noticed this man in his late forties, early fifties with a beard and glasses, wearing a green knitted jumper. He looked like your stereotype child abductor. 
Something about him walking past just seemed strange, but not enough to play on my mind until he walked past again ten minutes later in the same direction, as if he had just looped around the block. Ten minutes later, he appeared again and stopped at the edge of the driveway for about thirty seconds, looking at the window. He then proceeded to the door, looking in the window as he walked by. It was an old Victorian sandstone house with big storm doors on the front that you needed a key to open, so he couldn't get in. He knocked the door a few times, but something just told me not to answer. He then came to the window banging it and saying something, but I couldn't make it out. I then noticed the realization in his face that there was a back door. My parents never locked the back door so the dog could come in and out as he pleased. I ran through to the kitchen and within seconds of turning the key and locking it, the handle started turning and he started banging the door. I just curled up in a ball on the floor in fear. He started trying to open windows and eventually left about 30 minutes later. I dread to think what could have happened if I had not remembered the back door was unlocked. TLDR some guy tried to get into my house when I was home alone. Account 11. When I was a young child, I had the same dream every night for years about drowning when a huge wave swept over me and I sank to the bottom. Years later, I had a temp job delivering mail one summer during college. I saw this old lady sitting on a front porch waiting for me. When I got up there, she looked at me and said in a foreign accent, You drowned when Oceania sank beneath the waves. Freaked me out. Account 12. When I was a child, I lived in an old Victorian house, and I would always hear laughing while I was trying to sleep. I was an only child with a single mother, and when I was about five, six, I would wake up hearing laughter in the hallway in the middle of the night. After mentioning this to my mum, she swore it was probably just the TV being left on late, one night. I awoke hearing the laughter in my room. I went to sit up, but felt like there was someone holding my shoulders down, invisible hands gripping into my shoulders while I heard laughing. I screamed my little heart out. My mom ran into my room, flicking on the bedside lamp, convincing me it was just a dream until I said, but my shoulders hurt. She lifted up my t-shirt, and there were two adult-sized handprints on my shoulders. I honestly thought I had imagined it, and that it had never happened. But the other day, I mentioned it in passing to my mum, and she went blanket white and said, I don't want to remember that. Account 13. In 1993, I was lounging in the courtyard of TD Center in Toronto, laying on the grass, talking with a pretty girl. We hear a crash from above, and there was a man cartwheeling through the air, falling from a 24th floor window. I ran to see if I could help, and of course, that was pointless. He landed on the granite, was pretty mashed up. Apparently, he was at a party, and trying to demonstrate how one could throw their weight against the window and not go through.